Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Social Impact and Education Conference, hosted by Melibus. Back to the roots. Malta revisits its long tradition in medical innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to the Deputy Prime Minister of Malta, the Honourable Chris Fern, as he shares his thoughts on the medical cannabis sector in Malta. Good morning. Good morning. Merhaba, Malta. Don't worry, I'm not going to speak in Maltese. You'll be okay. I hear you had a nice and busy day yesterday, so thank you for being here so bright and early this morning. I'll just go over the last few years when it comes to the legislation with um, medical cannabis. Up to four years ago, up to 2015, up to 2015, any use of cannabis in Malta was illegal, even personal use, even use for medicinal purposes. So up to 2015, all cannabis products in Malta were prohibited and were illegal. In 2015, we took the bold step of deciding to start looking at the way we treated persons, citizens, who use cannabis for a, per for a personal reason. So we decriminalized the personal use of cannabis. Of course, any trafficking remains illegal, but use for personal purposes since 2015 became decriminalized. And part of that legislation, including legis included legislation on the use of medicine, of medical cannabis, of cannab cannabino cannabinoid products, for medical purposes. So in 2015, for the first time in Malta, products derived from cannabis were allowed for medicinal purposes. But the 2015 law was rather restrictive. The emphasis in 2015 was to make sure that there were no loopholes, that there were no doors or ventilators or windows which one could use through this law to introduce cannabis as a recreational as a recreational drug. So the 2015 law made sure that medicinal use of cannabis was strictly for medicinal use. And the provisos in that law included that there were a number of specialties and specialists in those specialities who could prescribe medicinal products of cannabis, so anesthetists, neurologists, psychiatrists, oncologists, but a very limited number of professionals could prescribe the products. And the product had to be a medical, had to be a medicine, had to be produced under the same conditions as any other medicines and registered with the medical authority as a medicine. So very strict pharmaceutical conditions, very strict licensing. So only one or two products could possibly be allowed for use. So this was in 2015. So in 2015, we had, for the first time, the possible use of cannabis as a medicinal product, but very restricted, only a number of professionals could prescribe it, and you could only use the drug as a medicinal product, as a pharmaceutical product, so as a, as a drug which was registered under the Medicines Authority. And every prescription had to have the approval of the Superintendent of Public Health, who is the regulator here in Malta. And over a number of years, 2015, because this was in March of 2015, 2016, 2017, there were very, very, very little prescriptions of cannabis as a drug. So there were only two doctors on the island who prescribed, and only for four patients over a period of two years. And in all four instances, 
the regulator, the superintendent of public health, refused the permit. So despite the 2015 law to allow cannabis to be used as a medicinal product, basically nobody could use this because of these restrictions. So in 2018, when we assessed what was going on, we decided to amend the 2015 law. And in 2018, we widened the scope of use of medicinal cannabis. We allowed all doctors who are registered in Malta to prescribe. So now not just a few specialists, but all doctors, including family practitioners, who are registered with the Medical Council to prescribe the drug. And we allowed drugs or products which are produced under GMP, so not solely as a medical product licensed under the Medicines Authority, but as GMP, as a good manufacturing product, we allowed GMP products also to be prescribable. We restricted the use as a smoking agent, so we are not allowed to smoke the drug even as a, as a, as a medicinal product. And it still required the approval of the superintendent of public health. But since 2018, so in a period of about one year, from two doctors who prescribed for four patients with no approvals, we've come up to about 32 doctors who are now prescribing, who have prescribed in one year, to over 400 patients, and have been approved in practically all cases except in four or five cases. So with the 2018 law, open to all registered medical practitioners on the island, and including GMP products, now the use of cannabis as a, as, as, as a medicinal product has been liberalized and is, is happening. So over the last year or so, we've seen the use of medical cannabis taking root here in Malta. So this is where we are. But after a year and a half, it's, it's a good time to look at the challenges. So is, is, is this a good place to be in? Are we happy with the situation? Should we improve? Are there things we need to look out for? And in short, there are three main challenges that I see. The first challenge is patient expectations. So we are seeing a problem, to me a problem, that a number of patients, a lot of patients, are looking at cannabis as a miracle drug. So you, there are patients who are resorting or pressuring the doctors to prescribe cannabis for any and every indication. I've had emails from people telling me, listen, my mother is, has terminal cancer, chemotherapy hasn't worked, radiotherapy hasn't worked, surgery hasn't worked, she's terminal, I hear that cannabis can cure cancer, would you recommend that I start my mother, or that somebody starts my mother, or that I, I, I get a prescription for my mother to go on to cannabis? And you might say, what's the harm in that? What's the harm in trying something for somebody who's terminal. But then I've had emails from people telling me, listen, my mother has cancer, has early breast cancer. Chemotherapy is upsetting her. I've decided, or she's decided, to stop the chemotherapy and start cannabis treatment instead, because we heard that it cures cancer. And this is worrying. This is worrying because, first and foremost, if we want this to be a success, and if we really want, and we are really serious about this, and we are, first and foremost, we have to keep patient safety on the forefront. Patient safety has to be our prime priority, always and everywhere. And if we encourage, or if we actively do not discourage our patients from looking at cannabis as a drug which will cure everything, then we, might, we will be failing our patients. So first and foremost, and this is a big challenge, I say, first and foremost, we need to make sure that we have very clear indications for the use 
for the medical use of cannabis, very clear indications with protocols that we will stick to and that the profession sticks to. This is of paramount importance. If we don't do this, then we will be failing our patients. So patient expectation that cannabis is a miracle drug which will cure everything needs to be counted. We need to educate our patients, we need to educate ourselves, and we need to make sure that we have the correct indications for the use of the drug. Otherwise, we will run into trouble. So that is the first challenge. The second challenge, and it's related to the first, is that a lot of doctors, a lot of medical professionals, who are the people who have to prescribe the drug, still do not believe that cannabis has a place in, medical, in modern medical use. So I said before that over 30 doctors over the last year have prescribed cannabis in Malta. But that, is, that represents only about 5% of our medical workforce. So 95% of our doctors are not prescribing cannabis. And the reason that they are not is that they don't believe, they don't have trust in the drug, they don't believe that it works, they are faced with patients who ask for the drug, for headaches, for insomnia, and then for cancer and for heart attacks, and they know that this drug cannot cure any, everything. So again, there is a lack of trust from the medical profession, and the reason is that medical professionals, doctors, are trained to look at evidence, to believe evidence, to treat patients on an evidence-based basis. And therefore, and if you would have heard yesterday my colleague from the Medicines Authority speak about this, we need a lot of clinical research. We need the research, we need to build evidence for the use of cannabis, and then we need to stick to that evidence. Now, as a government, and as through the Medicines Authority and through the Superintendent of Public Health, we have an interest to see that the use of medical cannabis and the industry to produce medical cannabis is a, has, is a sustainable venture. We don't want this to be a flash in the pan and then to peter out after two or three years. We want this to be a sustainable venture. We believe in this. We are putting a lot of time and a lot of resources into the sector, and we want this to succeed. But for this to succeed, we need to have the right research, the right evidence, and we need to then use the drug according to the evidence that we create. So this is of paramount importance. The first challenge is that we need to have clear indications. The second challenge is that we need to build the evidence so that our medical profession believes and trusts the use of this drug. So the first requires education and discipline. The second requires clinical research, well conducted, and then the production of evidence. And then we need to stick to that evidence. And the third challenge are counterfeit drugs. Are drugs or products that you can find on the internet, that are produced under suspicious circumstances, not GMP, not pharmaceutically, and these are available. And these are causing harm to patients. They, at best, they are not causing any benefit, and they are giving the industry a bad reputation. So we need to be careful, and we need to regulate, and we need to enforce against the use of counterfeit products. Again, the Maltese government, through the Medicines Authority, is very strict, has very strict regulations on the manufacture and the prescribing and the importation of products, medicinal products, from cannabis. We need to stick to these, we need to make sure that they are enforceable, and then we need to enforce them. Because if we don't do this, then again, we will never win the trust of the medical profession, and we will be doing our patients at the service. So in short, over the last few years, we've come a long way in allowing and making our patients, in, produce, in, in providing for our patients another avenue for treatment. 
we need to look after the space. There is a space, there's a space to grow in this for the industry and for our medical profession, but we need to regulate this properly. We need to be disciplined, we need to have the evidence, and we need to produce the research that gives us this evidence. As a government, we want to do this. As a government, we are facilitating this, but we need the industry on our side. We, we need to go after the long results. We are not here for a year or two. We want this to take root, to grow, and to be sustainable. And for this to be sustainable, I repeat, we need to have the trust. So I leave you with this. I will leave you with a, an exciting time. There is big growth potential here. We want this to happen. We can see it happening, but we want to work together to make sure we do this in a regulated, in an evidence-based, and in a scientific manner. So thank you, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Have a good day.